Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be telling you what I ordered from Lionel's 2023 Volume 1 catalog. I started doing this in the last catalog, 2022 Volume 2, and people seem to like it, and I've actually gotten a lot of requests from people asking if I was going to do it again. So here we go, I'm going to let you know what I ordered from the Lionel 2023 Volume 1 catalog. So just like last time, I submitted my pre-order over to Legacy Station on the very last day of the pre-order cutoff which this year was February 15th, 2023. You know, a lot of people will put their orders in right when the catalog comes out, and I've never understood that because it's not like it's a race. It's not like if you put your order in early, you're going to get your trains early. They all show up at the same time no matter when you pre-order them. And so I like to wait to the very end of the pre-order cutoff window to modify and tweak my list to get it exactly how I want it. So usually when the catalog first comes out, I'll make an initial list and then over the next few weeks, I'll tweak it and get it exactly how I want it and make sure it fits into my budget. And then I'll usually submit it right around the end or on the last day of that cutoff window. And just like I said last time, if you're new to this hobby, the best way to ensure that you get the trains you want for the best price is to pre-order them. Pre-ordering is important for a few reasons. First of all, you'll get the best price because typically most Lionel dealers will give you a pre-order discount. Secondly, it ensures that you'll actually get the model because Lionel bases their production numbers on the number of pre-orders that they get. So if they don't get enough pre-orders, they might not make the model or they won't make a whole lot of them and you might have a hard time finding it after the fact. And then feeding into that point, if you wait until after everything ships, it's going to be really hard, if not impossible, to get some of these items. And if you do find them, typically you're going to pay a lot more than you would have if you had pre-ordered them. These days, people on eBay love to jack up the prices of these trains. So yeah, an $1,800 locomotive in the catalog is very expensive. But if you wait until after the fact, you might end up paying $3,600 for that very same locomotive. It's a really weird time we're living in right now, and believe it or not, it's actually cheaper to pre-order stuff brand new from the catalog than to try to get it after the fact on eBay or somewhere like that. Anyway, starting off on page 12 of the catalog, I decided to go with the Vision Line Big Boy Superset. I was originally gonna just order one of the Big Boys by itself, but ultimately, I went with the Superset because it's got the extra Vision Line freight cars, including the new stock cars that have the Sheep on board. And then it's also got that special Victory boxcar, that World War II Victory boxcar at the end. And it's also got the Vision Line caboose that has sound effects and all that stuff. So yeah, it's expensive, $4,500 retail, but I decided to go with the Vision Line Big Boy Superset. And I'm also excited to see the box that it comes in. Lionel told us they're going to ship it in one big box and... With all those cars and the locomotive, it should be a massive set box. Skipping ahead to pages 20 and 21, I pre-ordered one of the Dreyfus J3 Hudsons. I think this is one of the coolest, if not the coolest, locomotive in the entire catalog. Now, I've already got a Dreyfus Hudson that was made by MTH years ago. That's the more typical kind, like you see at the bottom of the page with the coal tender with the little flaps on top. So this time I decided to go with something different and I got the one on the top right, New York Central number 5447. I like the cool drive wheels and I also like the fact that it has the water scoop steam effect on the tender. Now on pages 22 and 23, I really wanted to get the matching passenger cars. They look so cool, but they are so darn expensive that I just had to cut them so that I could get other stuff in the catalog. And I've also got some matching cars that were made by MTH years ago, so it's not all that bad. And who knows, I might pick them up at a later date, but I didn't want to pre-order them and be responsible for them. And you know, a lot of people complain about the high prices in all the recent catalogs, and I can understand that. My biggest gripe with the prices, the locomotives, I can understand there's a lot that goes into making one of these locomotives, but the passenger cars, they're just so crazy expensive and I don't understand it. I mean, a four pack of passenger cars for $950. Yeah, I just, I wanted them, but ultimately I had to cut them because I wanted other stuff more. Moving on to pages 24 and 25, the Russian decapods. I know most people were excited about Frisco 1630 because it still exists today. And it does look nice. I do like the doghouse tender, but frankly, I find it a little boring appearance-wise when compared to some of the others. And also, it does not have the swinging bell effect because the bell is prototypically located on the front of the locomotive rather than towards the rear. And, you know, if I'm going to pay $1,300 for a locomotive, 
I want it to have every feature it can have. And so for that reason, I ordered Erie 2445 because first of all, I really like that blue Russian steel that it's got. And also it has the swinging bell effect. Flipping over to pages 26 and 27, we've got the I1s, which I'm really excited about. And I decided to go with Pensy number 4250. And then on pages 28 and 29 with the 484s, I decided to go with, no surprise, the blue goose down at the bottom right, number 2900. It just looks so cool. This is going to be a really great model. And then on pages 30 and 31, we've got the Camelbacks. Now, I almost cut this from my order because I do have a Camelback that Lionel put out a few years ago. But man, I just couldn't say no to that Atlantic City Railroad number 610. It just looks so incredible, and this is going to be a beautiful locomotive. I know it. All right, now we come to the diesels with the E8 and E9 AA sets. And although I originally was going to get the AC and W AA set on the next page, I decided to go with the New York Central AA set just because of that cool green paint scheme. But I did get some AC and W stuff as well. On the next page, I got the dome car as well as the ACNW Station Sounds Diner 2-pack at the bottom of the page. And that way I can add those to the ACNW F Unit AB set that I already have. On pages 38 and 39 with the ES44s, I was originally going to order the Burlington Northern Unit, but I ultimately scratched it from the order to make room for other stuff because I've already got lots of ES44s. But who knows, I might pick one up later on, maybe if Legacy Station has some extras. Then on pages 40 and 41, we've got the NW2 switchers. Now, originally I was going to order one of these, probably the Burlington Northern, but I ended up scratching that because, as many of you know, I decided to do a custom run NW2 with Legacy Station. We're doing an Eric's Trains Appalachian and Western NW2 that I think looks really cool. That will arrive later this year, most likely when the rest of these arrive, and I'm really excited about it, so... Why order one from the catalog when I could get one with my own name on it? <laughs> and by the way, thank you to everybody who ordered one of these custom run NW2s, as well as the custom run Bay Window Caboose that we're doing. It's really humbling to know that there are so many people out there willing to order these things. And by the way, if you somehow missed all the announcements that I made about the custom run NW2 switcher and the Bay Window Caboose, and you'd like to order one, well... The pre-order deadline has already passed, but if you contact Legacy Station, they might be able to do something for you. You'll just have to call them and find out. Moving on, we've got the GP20s on pages 42 and 43, and I ordered the Kansas City Terminal number 2005 at the bottom right, and I ordered it for one simple reason, because it looks really cool. Then on page 52, I ordered the Lionel Play World trailer on flat car. And I ordered this because I can remember the Lionel Play World commercials on TV when I was a little kid. It wasn't long before they were all gone, but I have a distant memory of seeing those commercials on TV. And so when I saw it in the catalog, I thought it was super cool. And so I ordered one. And then the last thing that I ordered is on page 139. I ordered the MOW TMCC Rail Bonder. I think that's going to be pretty cool as well. Anyway, that is everything that I ordered from Lionel's 2023 Volume 1 catalog. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and let me know what you ordered from the catalog. I'd be interested in finding out. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.